Today we beat a 7.1 GHz Core i9 with the Ryzen 7 9700X to take the record in the OCCT AVX Single Threat Benchmark. Before making this video, I made a scatterbencher guide for the Ryzen 7 and 9700X in which I laid out how to overclock the processor in five unique overclocking strategies. I followed that up with a special episode in which I took that configuration and eliminated all thermal constraints to maximize the system's performance. Today's video is a little bit different because we're not aiming for stable overclocks. We're just trying to get a couple of number one spots in global benchmark leaderboards. After wrapping up my scatterbencher guide, I pinged John from Elmo Labs to see if he had an extra space in his office to try liquid nitrogen. Not only did he have the space, but he already had a system prepared for Ryzen 9000 liquid nitrogen overclocking. That was the system he used to break the 3 Mark CPU profile 16 thread record with the Ryzen 9 9950X. The system we used is nearly identical to the one from Scatterbencher 78 and 78X with here and there a little change. The main objective of any world's fastest video is to have a legitimate claim to that title. So I wanted to achieve at least one number one spot in a global benchmark leaderboard. In addition to that, I also wanted to see what was the maximum frequency I could achieve with precision boost enabled. I used the BIOS configuration from Scatterbencher 87X as a base for this video. Let's have a look at the BIOS and I will highlight some of the most important settings. First, we enable Expo to improve the memory performance. Then we use a synchronous e-clock to increase the precision boost frequency. By setting it to 110 megahertz, it means we increase the frequency for every VFT point by 10%. So four gigahertz becomes 4.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz becomes 5.5 gigahertz and so on. Next, based on the performance data we gathered in Scatterbencher number 78, I rely on an ACES memory preset to fine tune the memory subtimings. From previous testing, subtiming tweaking does almost as much as increasing the memory frequency. Now we switch to the AMD overclocking submenu and manually set the F clock and U clock frequency to 2200 and 3200 MHz respectively. Since we're relying on the precision boost technology to determine the CPU operating frequency, most of the tuning will be done in the precision boost overdrive submenu. First, we unleash the power limits by setting the PBO limits to motherboard. That effectively removes any motherboard power or current limit. Then we set the scaler to 10x, which increases the voltage limit in all core workloads from 1.35 volt to 1.375 volt. Next, we set the Fmax boost override to plus 200. On the 9700X, that means the new Fmax is 5750 megahertz. But with our e-clock of 110 megahertz, the actual new Fmax is 6325 megahertz. Now, the most important part of extreme overclocking with precision boost is voltage tuning. To increase the voltage, we use a positive curve optimizer across all cores. That shifts the entire VF curve upwards and forces the CPU to run about 100 millivolt higher for every VFT point. In daily overclocks, that would significantly reduce the operating frequency, but with e-clock and much lower temperatures, it actually gives more overclocking headroom. Then I also used Curve Shaper to address minor stability issues. I found that my overclock was stable at sub-zero temperatures, but not at ambient. By setting the medium and high temperature to a positive curve shaper, we increase the voltage at ambient temperatures and thus make it more stable. Lastly, we made some additional small changes to the SLC Uncore configuration, including enabling OC mode and setting the voltage to 1.3 volts. Overall, at minus 50 degrees Celsius, this configuration yielded a GeoMean benchmark performance improvement of plus 16.24% over stock. Apart from the BIOS configuration, there were two additional challenges to using extreme cooling with the Ryzen 9700X. First of all, we had to boot the system at positive temperatures. 
Otherwise, the temperature sensor would give trouble and the maximum frequency was locked to less than 5 GHz. However, lowering the operating temperature in the operating system was no problem. Second, the temperature delta between the CPU core and the bottom of the LN2 container was surprisingly large. The standout result is obviously the new record in the OCCT AVX single thread benchmark. The AVX performance of Ryzen 9000 CPUs is something that really stood out in hardware reviews. I highly recommend Alex's article at Number World on the topic. I found the Ryzen 9000 CPUs perform exceptionally well in the OCCT AVX benchmark and I almost took the number one spot with just AIO cooling. The number one spot is also actually mine as I achieved it during the Computex 2024 activities with ASUS. You can check out my 7.1 GHz OCCT stability certificate video for more information. With liquid nitrogen, it was relatively easy to break the record set by the Core i9-14900KF. My final score was 269.35 points. The same system also got close to beating the SSE single thread record. However, we're just missing a little bit more frequency to make that happen. Next up is CPU-Z, where I tried both the regular and the XLC version. The difference is pretty simple. In the regular version, when you validate a frequency, it will run quite a heavy workload to check what is the frequency under load. And in the XLC version, it doesn't do that. It just captures the frequency. I did this with the same configuration from Scatterventure 78X at 6.325 GHz. As I demonstrated in Scatterventure 78X, I could reach 6,325 MHz for all cores at minus 50 degrees Celsius. That also gave a nice CPU-Z benchmark score of 1,003 for 1T and 10,805 for NT. It's kind of cool to see that puts it past a Core i9-14900KS in a 1T workload and past the 16-core Ryzen 9 3950X in a 32-thread workload. Switching to the XLC version, I could also validate a frequency of 6.8 GHz by disabling SMT and pushing up the E-clock frequency. Then I also ran Geekbench 6, which some Twitter users discovered before I published this video. This result also put me at the top of the leaderboard for single core and multi-core. Of course, I also ran a couple of games with an LN2 cooled system for the Scatterbencher number 78X guide. No records here, but I thought it was a cool site. Overall, this was a pretty cool project to undertake. Traditionally, we don't really use Precision Boost or Precision Boost Overdrive for extreme overclocking, and that's because it's a very dynamic clocking technology. Overclockers tend to prefer predictability, so they want to set a fixed frequency and a fixed voltage for a specific fixed temperature. But as I said, Precision Boost is very dynamic. It took me a while, it took me a couple of days to kind of figure out how Precision Boost works with negative temperatures. But after trying out for a couple of days, I now feel a lot more confident using Precision Boost with extreme cooling like liquid nitrogen. Obviously, the OCCT AVX single thread record is the highlight of this video. It's always nice to get to the number one spot in a global benchmark leaderboard, although basically I beat my own score from a couple of months ago. The other results are pretty sweet too, but I wouldn't say they're remarkable. Furthermore, at HardwareBot, there's a bunch more talented overclockers doing a bunch more amazing things with the 9700X. So you should check out their results if you want to see real overclocking uh, performance or real overclocking geniuses.